Oh dear, now where were we? Ah, yes, of course, yes, yes, yes. Now, x equals gamma, now, uh, that means roughly two and a half percent. So that should give us a curve of round about 80 degrees. Did, oh, by the way, did you take three-dimensional graph geometry at your school? Hmm? No, Doctor. Only Boyle's law. What a pity. What a pity. So we shall have to boil this down now, shall we? <laughs> well, now then, let's see. The Equations of Doctor Who from Doctor Who Annual, 1966. There is no space that is without time, and there is no time where there is no space. The two exist together endlessly, and each without the other has no real existence or even meaning. But, as an experiment, think of the two separately for a while. Consider infinity of space and eternity of time. Take a few minutes, a few months, a few years, a few centuries, a few eons. And still, there is no meaning in the two terms to our human minds. After a million million miles, space still must stretch endlessly out there. After a million million years, eternity is only just beginning. When he built his TARDIS, Doctor Who well knew that its journeys must be in time as well as in space. All the marvellous and intricate electronic instruments in his vessel are built on that basis. At the start of a journey, the TARDIS becomes resolved into a looser pattern of atoms and electrons than is familiar in matter on Earth. The new pattern and all it contains is transferred instantaneously to any point in space and any moment in time which the doctor's settings of his instruments has selected. In our space-time of the universe we see with our eyes and our telescopes we travel the long and weary way of matter as we know it. In our imaginary spaceship built on Earth it would take us four and a half years to reach the nearest star to our sun, even if our spaceship could travel at the velocity of light, 186,000 miles per second. The TARDIS can travel to a far distant galaxy in an instant by transferring its atoms, loosely patterned, out of our normal material space-time sphere directly to the other space-time sphere Doctor Who has selected. We talk of dimensions, of multi-dimensions, each possibly existing together in one place with all the infinite others without touching or any contact of matter and time and knowledge. Those multi-dimensional spheres we shall never see or know about. But Doctor Who, in his wonderful TARDIS, has visited and seen them all. A legion of angels can dance upon the point of a pin, we are told. In the larger universe, outside our galaxy, there is not such a thought as size or the divisions of time we invent to help us mark the passing hours. So, explain to me how this TARDIS is larger on the inside than the out. Hmm? All right, I'll show you. Unless there is a control of comparison, there is nothing really small or vast in the universe. Which box is larger? That one. Everything in existence must be related to all others. Now which is larger? That one. But it looks smaller. Well, that's because it's further away. Exactly. If you could keep that, exactly that distance away, and have it here, the large one would fit inside a small one. That's silly. The equations of Doctor Who embrace all of space and all of time, both tightly locked together in one idea, the idea of living matter. He is the greatest human mathematician. His materializations draw the distances and the ages together into one simplifying pattern. Doctor Who faces the awe-inspiring reality of space and time and with wonderful human courage has set out to explore the space-time universe in every shape and place and time he encounters. 
He is human curiosity personified. He must see for himself. He must go there. He must learn all there is to know. Are we not all a little possessed of the spirit of Doctor Who? Who?